hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, November 1st, 2019, and this is our weekly video. We'll take a look at eBay auction results for the week, see what's coming up next week. There were some pretty good sales this week on eBay, there were, uh, and there's a bunch of good stuff coming up uh, this week that we'll get to later on in the video. Uh, a seller over in Europe that we keep an eye on has got about 60 nice lots up, and uh, we'll get into some of them, and they'll be on the newsletter page, of course, uh, uh, this weekend. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that we did, in case you missed it, we did do a video on Wednesday of the, or, or Tuesday, I forget which day, one of the days this week. We did a video on the upcoming sales in London and uh, some pretty good things in there. It's, a, it's about a 40 minute video, it covers uh, the things that we liked the most anyway. And uh, we'll, we'll go back and see how they do after the sale. The sales start next week, some interesting things. And uh, the progress on the uh, global uh, auction pages are coming along very nicely. And um, uh, we're, we're still picking away at that, getting some last-minute things squared away. Uh, so let's take a look and see how things went on eBay this past week. All right. One of the things that sold was this. This is a, a Yuan, the Ming Dynasty uh, type of bronze that turns up. These, this form is, uh, it turns up periodically. Um, they turn up in London for some reason fairly often. This one was being sold by a seller in the U.S. Uh, Chamberlain Antiques had this. It was a nice one with all the immortals running around the outside of it. These are lost wax technique castings and uh, very nice. I, I like these a lot. It's a sort of a base form. And this one did pretty well. It sold for $1,675. Uh, which isn't a bad price for that at all because they, they bring that uh, in the in the London auctions fairly often in that twelve to eighteen hundred dollar range seems to be the price for these. All right, and then over here, this was another thing that uh, Chamberlain had up was this uh, very nice Famille Rose 18th century vase. It, had a, it was beautifully potted. The shape of this vase was really nice. I love the neck on it, the way it sweeps in nice and narrow and then flares out, and the proportions were very very good. Here's a picture of the bottom, very typical 18th century foot on this, and uh, the, the colors and the enamels were all very nice, and it did pretty well. It brought $9,100, uh, but a, a beautiful example, it really was, nice looking thing. And uh, how big was it? Somebody said I should always mention the height of everything. Uh, nine inches tall, not a big vase, but beautifully enameled, just beautiful decoration. And then over here, there was this nifty little uh, uh, Femi Ver uh, cup, uh, Wukai cup. Uh, it brought uh, uh, $329 US, but it was nicely shaped. It was a good looking thing. I happen to like these. I like little cups that are, that are well decorated. They're very delicate. I like month cups too. Um, here's a picture of the bottom right there with the uh, fungus in the middle and all that. Very typical of these. And as I said, it brought $329, which was a reasonable price for this. These are nice looking. And then there was another um, uh, cup, another Bukai cup. Uh, this one was more of a wine cup, beautifully done also, nice shape, beautifully proportioned. And uh, it did even better. It brought $515. I like that. And there was, it was a good week for Kang Shi. This was an interesting thing. The seller up here was being very cautious on this plate, and he dated it as being 19th century. It's not. It's a Kang Shi plate and a very unusual pattern. And uh, unfortunately, he dated it wrong, so it probably threw some people off. But this was a really nice dish. I love the pattern on this. I like the, uh, the, the, the Kirin, the Kilin running around the outside with panels of uh, flowers and then this... Uh, kiosk in the center a nice a nice looking uh, thing i don't know the story behind this image but obviously it's it's it tells some tale and i don't know what it is off the top of my head i couldn't i look tried to look it up i couldn't find it all right and here's the back of it okay that's a kang shi back um this is a a, a very nice very typical kang shi foot rim that you see here uh this ivory creamy color with a few little flecks and nicks out of it and uh, a couple of pits in the bottom, which is very typical of these, and the nice double circle with the uh, drawing of the incense burner. They, you, as you know, they use precious objects um, sometimes on the backs of these or Buddhist symbols uh, much more often than, uh, than, than appropriate rain marks. All right. And then on to this. This was a really pretty jar. This was also an 18th century jar. It had been drilled. It had been made into a lamp. This particular form, they made hunt out millions of these into lamps, apparently. Uh, I've had a lot of them over the years, and, and uh, whenever you see one of these ovoid jars, I always check the bottom because it's probably been drilled. And there's the drill hole right there. All right. 
but this is a nice example. This is a really, really pretty one. The details are very nice, very 18th century. Uh, I, love the, I love the way they did, quickly drew in little elements on the robe, and you have the children and so forth on it. And there's another one of a demon, and uh, nice, got that nice clear yellow that uh, you like to see that are on 18th century uh, porcelains. And this did pretty well. It brought $810. Without the whole, it probably would have brought 1300 or so. But uh, the whole makes a difference. Condition is very important, as always. <laughs> and then on to this, another Kang Shi plate. I like this one also. I like the pattern. I like the alternating, the honeycomb pattern, and the different, the different patterns done around the rim. Very much in the way they do. The Japanese often did them, too. Uh, they'll, they'll throw in textile patterns this way. And, uh, but the, the way the flowers are painted, the nice spacing, everything is proportional, very neat and tidy. Um, here's a good detail of it. Nice, uh, nice translucent aubergine, um, and that yellow that you see on these kung shi pieces, pretty typical. And that nice green, and overglazed blue. All right, and uh, this one did uh, pretty well too. It brought a thousand thirty-three dollars. This was a charger. This was a fifteen-inch plate. So that makes it a that makes it a pretty good buy. I wouldn't have been surprised at all to see this bring sixteen hundred to two thousand. So that was a that was a good buy for someone. And then on to this, the 20, it's early 20th century, first, first 40 years of the 20th century. But a nice Famille Rose figure of a man, obviously holding up a basket with flowers in it. Uh, quite attractive. And here's a picture of the bottom of it. It had a, had a stamp mark into it. And there was, at some point or another, this was mounted on something. If, if you looked at the bottom of this, I'm wondering what this white gunk was around the outside. You can see the remnants of some sort of square base or something that it had been set onto, uh, which was the... Uh, which left behind some paint, all right? Not a big deal, you can clean it off. There was a little blemish here on the back. And at the end of the day, it did all right. It brought $610. Yeah, these can bring, some of, some of these figures can be very large. There was one on here uh, about a year ago that was uh, 28 inches tall that brought thousands. But those are much rarer. They didn't make them very often in, in huge sizes. Typically these were, uh, you know, t eight to 13 inches, 14 inches tall. That was a nice one though. And then over here to the uh, 18th century uh, export plates, uh, armorial, uh, these are quite nice. Here's a picture of the back of them, uh, probably Yong Chen period, but uh, nicely done. And um, let's see, uh, how did they do? $730 for the pair. But pairs are very desirable. People love pairs. Um, uh, you know, if you, pairs are generally worth uh, roughly three times the price of a single. Uh, so uh, this wasn't a bad buy. And then on to the silver. This was a nice piece of Chinese silver with a with a with a heraldic shield that had never been that never been engraved, which is, makes it kind of nice. If you buy these, you can put your own initials on it, put your business cards in it. All right. Imagine showing up for an appointment with this and handing out business cards from this. It would be nice, nice accoutrement. And uh, this was a good looking one. I like the shape. I like the I like the way they did the shape of the the body of it, like a, these lotus tips running around it and the figures in the landscape scene. There's a go table in the middle, all kinds of things going on. It's interesting. And uh, in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $1,002. But uh, this was sold by uh, Super Shrink, who's a good silver seller. They sell English silver, all kinds of silver. They get a lot of Chinese silver. They used to be here in Massachusetts, and they have since moved down to the Carolinas, North Carolina. But they get good things. We do keep an eye on them. I like their stuff. And uh, over here to a nice, very simple but elegant um, a rank badge with a, with a, with a, with a, with a heron on it um, uh, or an egret. Uh, it's, they, have it, they, they said on it there's a pheasant on this. It's not a pheasant. That's a, that's a heron or an egret. And um, it did pretty well, $391. But it had a very simple uh, bottom here along the lower edge. So they tend not to bring as much. If this was fully filled in with, with other patterns and so forth, it would have brought a bit more. Uh, but that's the way it goes. But they, they made them in all, all types. And then on to this. This was something else that Chamberlain had up. Josh uh, Juice is the seller name. Um, was this very nice Japanese snow scene woodblock print. It was up to $9,000 last week when, 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 when it posted up on the newsletter page. It got there very quickly in the first 24 hours. It ended up selling for $13,600. But Haisui uh, woodblocks are very rare, especially the early ones. And this looked like a first strike to me. So um, there was a lot of interest in it. And it's, it's part of a famous series. 
Uh, Japanese woodblocks seem to be getting a little traction on the rare ones, and and as always on the on the on the early early impressions. It's always about the date of the impressions because they made so many copies uh, around the turn of the century. All right, and now over here to this was this nice Mandarin uh, dinner plate, uh, uh, beautifully done. It was an, had an armorial crest at the top. It did have some wear though around the enamels, and I kind of hesitate. I wondered how it would do because there were some losses up here and here, obviously, you can see it. And uh, that was probably uh, most likely due to uh, lots of use in over-cleaning. Um, uh, in the old days, they used to clean these gilded plates with ammonia. Um, uh, it was a common kitchen uh, cleaner. And ammonia will strip gilding off of, uh, uh, gild, uh, gilding off of porcelain very quickly. It basically dissolves it. You don't ever want to use ammonia on, plate, on a plate that has... Uh, has gilding on it because it'll just take it off over time and uh, this is what happened here all of that said and done this did pretty well it brought forty eight hundred and fifty dollars but these these are early 19th century late 18th century plates with armorial crests on them in a big platter like this um, this platter was uh, pretty good size as I recall it was a uh, uh, to, 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 to 11 inches wide so it was nice nice looking dinner plate it wasn't that big I guess but any rate uh, this plate in perfect condition would have brought probably seven, seven thousand or so, seven or eight thousand. All right, now let's mosey on over to this. He had another one of these uh, Kung Shi bowls up. Again, Chamberlain Antiques had this uh, very, very pretty bowl. Interior scenes and landscapes and all that good stuff that everybody likes about Kung Shi pieces. Here's a picture of the bottom with the with the uh, 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 Kung Shi mark on it, and. Um, it did pretty well. It brought $4,239. Nice looking plate. Nice looking bowl. And then last is this, the Ming Jar. Uh, this was probably one Lee period. Um, I think it was marked, wasn't it? Yes, it was. There we go. And uh, this was a nice looking jar. Good clear enamels. Uh, had the immortals running around the outside of it. Uh, here you have them all carrying vases and uh, so forth. And uh, one of them is playing a flute good looking pot it ended up selling for ten thousand six hundred and three dollars and this particular one measured uh six inches tall these were not terribly big but a good looking pot they did make big ones but most of them are fairly small but this one was nicely decorated and had a beautiful lid on it i don't know if anybody caught the lid and uh it ended up going for ten thousand six hundred and three now over here a rockefeller plate from the same collection as the, as the other one. They call this a Rockefeller pattern because there was a, a set in New York that was very similar with the same sort of pattern. It's a long story. But at any rate, here's another one. And again, um, probably from the, judging by the looks of it, probably from the same collection as the previous. And again, the wear to the uh, gilding here uh, got uh, taken off. Here's a picture of the, of the, uh, the back of it. There it is. A nice looking bowl, but well decorated, wasn't it? Well, I love the horse. Look at the horse. He looks worried. Poor horse has a worried look on his face. And uh, at the end, it did fine. It brought $4,150, all right? And this they call these liner bowls. Nice looking thing. And then on to here, the, uh, the Chinese uh, skirt. It's interesting. These skirts seem to have reached sort of a, a very consistent level in pricing, which makes buying them sort of easy because if you see one, and uh, it's for sale somewhere in an antique shop or going through an auction, and it's of this type with these nice panels at the bottom, and this this one is in sort of apricot or peach color. Uh, you, 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 we see them sell very routinely in the 275 to 450 dollar range, depending on the on the condition, color, and uh, uh, level of, of needlework. This had nice quality needlework on it. It's right in the sort of in the middle range. And it sold for $327. So if you see one at an auction somewhere and it's going off for uh, $100 or it's in an antique shop in a heap somewhere for 50 bucks, grab it and throw it on eBay. Make some money. All right. Or if you collect silk, you've got yourself a bargain. All right. And then on to this. This, I think, was one of, uh, one of the best robe buys of the last couple of months. This was a really nice late 19th, early 20th century ladies semi, uh, uh, you know, in, in informal robe. But beautiful quality. Really nice quality. 
I, I thought this would do better. Uh, but if you look at the colors, um, you, you know it's got, you look at the collar up here, you can tell that it's had some use, it's been worn. And you have all these very crisp, clear colors with the citron fingers and flowers and all the other elements. And here's the one with the, the flower basket, that, 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 that patterned, patterned big flower basket. You see these, this also in the center often of um, 18th century plates. It was a popular pattern. This went for just $810. I think somebody got a fabulous buy for that. I thought this would probably bring twelve to $1,800, I think. I, I, I'm, I'm really surprised that didn't bring more. All right, but somebody got a good buy. Like I said, always leave a bid. I always say that. Um, leave a bid on things. Um, um, you know, put them on your watch list first, then leave a bid on it right away, even if it's a small one. And that way, you get you'll get in the in the eBay system. Though you'll get more notifications as it closes and so forth. And then over here to this, the Saladon Barb Rim Bowl. This was a nice one. It's a fairly typical one. Um, they made they made quite a few of them. They, the the ones that have a slightly uh, uh, deeper greener color uh, tend to bring a bit more. But this was a legitimate nice uh, Ming Lincoln Saladon. There's the back of it. Uh, good 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 even coating of glaze there you have the glazed uh, glazed foot rim because these are fired on these rings that support them so they can fully glaze the feet so they don't scratch surfaces this one brought sixteen hundred and twenty five dollars not bad and over here to this this nice little ming bowl i thought this might be catch somebody's eye i kind of like that um, this was a very nice sort of Wan Lee period bowl with pine trees and vines running around the outside of it. And then you have this interior of these sort of, uh, I don't know what you call them, like, like little, little eggs pattern and a, f a cluster of flowers in the middle. Very typical sort of provincial wear Ming, Ming porcelain. Here you see it close up. And uh, it went fairly modestly, $250. How do you go wrong with that? That's a nice piece. If you like early ceramics, seems to me that the uh, Wan Li Tian Chi pieces, th those later uh, uh, Ming pieces, are, 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 are very reasonably priced right now for some reason. I don't know why. Um, they, they seem not to be getting a lot of interest from the Chinese buyers. And then on to this, that nice little um, Republican period of, of bottle form of vase with a great shape to the foot at the bottom, nicely decorated, nice enamels. Um, this is a good-looking little little pot right there. There it is. This was sold by uh, God Revy, our friend William over in the UK, and it was fully inscribed on the back. Had everything going for it. And in the end, it did quite well. It brought $4,915. Like I said, it was a pretty good week on eBay. There were some nice things up, um, but this was this this was a good-looking thing. Will finds nice things. And then over here to the uh, to the ivory card case that you can't sell on eBay. <laughs> This, here's another one. Um, this is sold over in Europe. Nice looking one though. Beautifully done. Nice deep carving. Beautifully polished. All, all the highlights have been smoothed down just right. Um, sometimes they over polished them. And uh, here's a picture of the interior. When you see these card cases, always check the interior sleeve to make sure it's not damaged. If it is, you can still buy it, but you just want to adjust the price on it a little bit. All right. This one looked to be in good shape. It wasn't busted. And it ended up selling. I think this was very reasonable. Um, he had it listed as sandalwood, uh, presumably to get by the screeners of uh, eBay, because you can't say, if you say bone or faux bone or ox bone, they often get flagged. So he just called it sandalwood. Obviously, it's not sandalwood. Um, and it went for $323. But he got it sold, so there you go. And then over here to this Femi Joan uh, pl planter, Femi June planter, uh, late 19th, early 20th century by the looks of it. Good color, pretty pretty looking thing. I like planters because I, I, I like to think that people buy them and put plants on them. You actually use them. It's always a good idea. And uh, this one sold for uh, $659. But it was a pretty one, and I like the battle scene on it. I like the, the, the nice nice greenish blue running around the top of it. Good clear yellow. The yellow on this was nice. Nice even yellow color, and uh, had, they had this uh, palm leaf on, on the side and so forth. And uh, $659. Not too bad. And then over here to this uh, uh, rose mandarin uh, scallop-rimmed uh, bowl, export porcelain done probably between 1820 and 1850, uh, but in good condition. Uh, the enamels on this were all in nice condition. I don't see any, uh, you know, a lot of chips 
or anything like that. Because often these export pieces, they do get chipped sometimes on the enamels because people use them um, so much. And uh, the blue on here is that nice, that nice uh, bluish green and all that seafoam green. And it did, it did just fine. It ended up selling for $420 with uh, 31 bids. And that was from our friend Steve up at Coast to Coast Antiques. Um, uh, he, he's a good picker up there. He gets nice things. And then over here, uh, there's a couple of things on um, uh, uh, Catawiki that are still up. Uh, this one is the covered uh, uh, lotus and peony vase. It's Kung Shi period. Closes on, uh, it looks like it closes tomorrow on Saturday. So we'll see how that does. And uh, then they have this also, this nice Wan Li uh, uh, plate. of good deep cobalt on this. This, had real, this has really deep cobalt coloring on it. Um, the back of it, that's what they look like. They've not, they, they, they sort of always painted these very quickly around the backs. And uh, let's get back to the front of it, though, because I want you to see the color of this. This has very nice color, very nice deep, dark blue color. Uh, uh, really is nice and clear. Sometimes Wan Lee dishes can get a little gray. Uh, this one is a good deep cobalt color. It's up to $400. It closes on Sunday. All right. And then over here, this is one of the, the seller I was mentioning. This is Ching period. Um, and he has, uh, let's see here, where's his, where's his list? Hold on. Right there, here it is. Okay, this is Ching Period's uh, uh, latest offering. It's 50, 57 lots are up right now. Most of them are 18th, early 19th century. There's a few 17th, uh, maybe, maybe some late Ming pieces thrown in here. Uh, he always has good things. Uh, he's, he's a good seller. He used to sell a lot on eBay, and then he slowed down for some reason. Now he comes back periodically with some very nice sales. And this is a good one. It's silver in it, as you can see. Sets, lots of Famille Rose, brush pots, the whole bit. They'll all be on the newsletter page this week. So if you subscribe to it, you'll get the notification when we update the page uh, later on today. All right. And then on to here. This is on Catawiki this, this week. Is this nice 18th century export uh, pagoda type of dish uh, with, the, with the two birds on it. I love this. This closes in eight days. And uh, it's, uh, it's a, what is it up to? It doesn't have any bids yet. It literally just went up. Just went up a few hours ago. And we caught it. It's going to be on the page. And uh, this closes on Sunday. A nice pair of uh, beaker vases. Um, uh, beautifully done. Kung Shi. It has an, they each have an artisma leaves on the bottom. And um, they're up to uh, $1,100. And uh, we'll see how they do. They should do pretty well. Um, those are nice looking vases. How big are they? They are uh, 27 centimeters, so they're about eight or nine inches tall. Very attractive, very attractive indeed. And these are on Katowiki as well, and a good looking pair of uh, garlic neck Kung Shi bottle vases, and it's a pair. A few weeks ago, there was a pair of these uh, of sort of similar ones on here. You remember they were sold separately. Maybe they were on, they were on eBay, um, and there were two of them. One of them had some damage. One of them didn't, and the one that was perfect ended up selling for around 1500 to 1800 and the other one that had the broken, had a break, as I recall, around the neck, ended up selling for about three or 400 um, And here you have two of them, and uh, they're nice looking, beautiful looking. They'll be on the newsletter down at the bottom in the Katawiki section. And there's another uh, Kendi here with a, with a, with a chillin' on it, uh, right here, the, the fl flying uh, chillin'. And uh, we'll see how that does. Sometimes they call them flying horses. All right, and that's it for the week. There's all some good things, and uh, as always, we're um, uh, updating the uh, eBay Today page every morning, bright and early, uh, when I'm having my coffee, <laughs> and uh, we're working on the on the big project, and that'll be coming out probably, uh, like I said, within the next week or so. And uh, we're I think we we may give we may we may make it sort of like a free trial thing for a while, for a couple of weeks, let people try it, see what they think of the the global auction pages. Um, we've added, we we've, we've overcome some very big obstacles on getting images and things to load, uh, which have been a, a very problematic because of the different systems all the different auction houses use. Uh, but we've done that, and uh, we're moving ahead nicely with it. Okay, uh, that's it. If you like the videos, give us a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment, I love to hear from people. I love to re I read all the comments. I don't always respond because I don't feel like I, I, I want to interlope on everybody. But um, I do read them all, and, and thank you for, for making them. And... Um, Subscribe here on YouTube and subscribe to us over on Bitamount, and we'll see you all next week. And uh, we'll help do that video once the uh, auctions finish up in London. Uh, there's a couple of pieces in there I absolutely loved. 
So, uh, listen, everybody, have a great weekend. Autumn is here. Beautiful weather. Uh, it's going to be in the, in the 30s here tonight, I guess. But that's okay. All righty. See you all uh, next time. Bye-bye.